on this episode, I have a queue system where you can add requests into the queue. Got a few entries in there. A queue to look at the different options, different entries in the list. A mod queue as well, which will show all the entries if there's more than five. We got an oops command for the viewers to remove their last entry. Also a mod, re mod remove command to remove another entry you want. And finally, to show the updated queue there, we've got the next up command, which will show the streamer what is next to do and to remove the entry as well. So to implement the list system into a streamer bot, we import the code. So right clicking on the actions area, selecting import and pasting in the string from below. You might find like here, you want an additional line or character return. So you need to remove that before it gives you the actions to import. It's worthwhile noting, this works with a file as a way of storing the state. So it does persist it between stream bot sessions. And uh, since it uses a file, it's highly recommended to use a queue. So when you import the actions, you're already in, you're also importing a queue here that's a blocking queue allowing only one action to run at a time. So we need to set up each of these actions. The first one, simplest setup, we need to point it at the file we want to use. Now, if we don't have a file here, we may need to create it, but I've got one existing. It is worth noting, we'll cover later, that it's best to remove that file after these lists have been set up the first time around and let the system to manage it from there. Next one, picks, pick next entry in list. We need to again set the file up, but this time it is in a different format. It's just a uh, open value, so you can type in things and set that to the file. It's worth I'll put this into the clipboard. And then go to compile, and we can see here we're missing an assembly references. So we can find references, I don't think it it works with that, so we need to add it in a specific reference. So system.link, and we should be able to compile. There we go. Again, move this entry. We can paste that entry in if it's different to the files we have here. Again, we need to add the system.link reference in. It should default to the location where the libraries need to be. And again, that compiles. Again, same set arguments, same system .linq. And each time making sure it compiles successfully before we go out. Two more, again, Exactly the same as before. System.linq. Maybe set the argument as well. And make sure that compiled correctly. Yes. And the last one. System.linq again. Just the uh, LINQ.dll, none of the other ones are needed. And you can see that's compiled also. Again, set the argument list file here if needed. So to add the commands, we right click in the area, we select add. So the first command we're going to put in is add request. You could make this a channel point reward but make sure you have the channel point reward set so it, it requires input if you're doing that. So add to list is the action we're going to trigger here. Next up, we're going to add in the oops command. So this is where 
someone maybe wants to remove the song entry that they put in place. So remove my list entry is the action for that. So these are both viewer commands. Next up, we're going to add in the Q command. Again, another user or viewer command. So viewer show Q. Now the mod commands. So the first one is to show the mod queue. So that's the full queue. Make that a moderator only command. Then I would suggest that the next command called mod remove has a global cooldown of a few seconds. Because if that's run by several mods at the same time, we might remove an entry we don't want to remove. So mod remove. Again, moderators only command and uh, remove my list entry mods. And finally, next up. So this is picking the next entry in the list. And again, likely want that to be a moderator command. And there we have the uh, command set up, and now it's over to test. One additional point here. It's worthwhile noting that if you don't remove the list file itself at this point, you will end up with an empty entry at the top of the list. So once you've set up the actions, do remove the list file that you've created. So the first command we're going to test is the add request. First we want to put on the list is make more streamer bot videos. Let's do some other entries in this. So make some Twitch speaker videos. Have some fun in there as well. Get some food. Uh, play some synth riders and finally get some sleep. So we've added a lot of entries here into the uh, list. So users can use this to look at the first five entries. And we can have a look at the mod queue. And we can see here that there's six entries. So within here, we can see the additional entry using the moderators. Now, if I want to remove an entry as a user, so as a requester, I can say, there's no more sleep entry, and that's reflected in the mod queue. So we need to use mod queue to check that. Now in the queue, you see the numbers. So the numbers next to the left hand side is how we actually remove that. So we can use the mod remove command. Again, uh, we've, we've lost out on sleep. Um, I guess no fun as well. And the queue reorders. So we have the entries there, but we have no fun. So we've gone to add request. We've done the oops. We've done the mod remove, mod queue, and queue there. So finally, we want to go through the list. So this is a moderator command. So next up. So what entries in there? So next up, we need to make some more stream bot videos. And what we can do now is look at the queue. It's removed that top entry and we have a shorter queue. Finally, we're going to go through and explain each of the actions for you to, to explain what code we're using. First one, we execute code straight away. And this is simply used to get the time. So it gets the hour and minute from the hours and minutes 
it then sets an argument. So this argument can then be used by other actions within this, um, this well, other sub actions within this action. You then write to the file, you write in whatever's been requested, then the time which you've got from the sub action above, and finally by that user. We then notify the user we've added that entry of what they've typed in, which is a raw input, to the queue. We're going to go through the show queue options here. They're very similar. I'm going to start with the viewer one. Again, setting the list file where the file is, executing the code, and what's happening is it is just going to look at the first five entries. And it does that by looking at this file, going through each of the lines here. Then if it's less than six entry, uh, the sixth, sixth entry, so the first five, we start with one here. Uh, a lot of time you see code starting with zero. We're using one here because we're outputting that number. And we'd like to use line one because people find that easier to follow on list. So while it's the first five entries, so less than, less than six, so it's up to five. We're going to go through for each line in the, this file, send a message, the number plus the counter. So whatever starts with one goes up to five, then a space hyphen space plus the line. Now the line is what's being written up above, which then contains the request itself, the time and the user. We then increment the counter until we've gone through the file. Then we end return true. The mods pretty much the same, but we don't have the statement to check only the first five entries. We just say every single time, we're gonna put that queue into chat. Remove my list entry for the user. So this is starting to get a bit more complicated. So you pull in the this file, the user. We have some variables like the, the line number where we match the entries. So we want to find the entry we want to remove. Because it's from the user, it's going to be the latest entry. You might have multiple matches. The current line and total number of lines. So we've got the string, which is the line which we are currently processing. The matched line, which is the line we're going to remove. And then a temporary file, which we have from there. So we'll, we'll use that temporary file at some point as well. So using the file, we're going to go through that file until it's empty, uh, if it's not empty. We increment the line that we've read in. We are looking at matching, um, getting the line and splitting it up by spaces. And we then pick out the last word, which is of the line, which is split by spaces, it's going to be the very last word. So if the word, that word we've just picked out matches the user account, then that's going to potentially be the line that we want to remove. But we don't know at any point we're starting at the top of the line if it needs to be removed. So that's why we say this is the current line we are on, put it to the match line, and the actual text we want to remove is match line. Now we'll go through. So if we have multiple matches, the match line and matched line variables are going to be the last entry because we also want to remove that last entry with the oops command. We then increment the line number and that line number is then going to potentially be used here in the future. Here when we go through again. So if we have no entries to remove, return false. It doesn't matter. We just say it's not going to remove anything. Otherwise, we notify the uh, user saying we're going to, which entry we're going to remove. So the number and the match line. Then the follow on code is actually going to remove the line. So we're going to go through the this file again, but we're going to write to a temporary file. And what we're going to do is every entry that we're not removing, we write to that temporary file. So if the line is not the same as a match line, we need to remove. We will write a line. Now this is done because 
you get some interesting behavior with um, with new lines and this will prevent uh, empty entries at the top of the text file. So that's why if it's the first line, we don't put a, uh, a the, the slash R, so backslash R backslash N is like a new line uh, code. So while we go through and it's not the match line, apart from this little caveat here, we're just gonna write in the previous entries. We then delete the old one. If current line is one, so if it's actually an empty file, we just delete it altogether. Otherwise, we put a temporary file to the list file. So like we explained to remove the list file after we set up the actions, we need to make sure that the bot is doing that if the list is empty, empty itself. Otherwise, we end up with an empty entry at the start. So removing the list entry from the mods, very similar. It's pretty much identical. But what we do is we know which line to remove. So we can go through until the line is the right line number that we have. And uh, we read that line in and uh, let's go through it step by step. So we write into the file again and the, the while the line is um, not null, we're going to go through and if it's the same as the entry line that we want here, so this is input zero. So this is like the number of the line, so it's the first, you know, like the number of the line. So if it's um, not the entry we want to remove, then we write it out again with the caveat of the empty line. Otherwise, we match it, tell it we're removing entry from there. Otherwise, we say look, there's nothing to go through, or we delete that empty entry there. And finally, we're going to pick out the next item to play in the list. So we have the list file again being pulled in. We are going to then know it's always going to be the first line we're going to pull in. So we again using a temporary file, going through each line in the current one, increment it there. If the line is not the first line, because we ignore that first line in the entry, and if it's the second one, again, similar behavior to prevent the blank line. So we're just removing the entry that way. Otherwise, it's going to be the, the next line, which is the next up. So we put that into an argument. So if it's not that, uh, that line, we, we can say that next up is what's going to be defined. We then can read that out afterwards. Otherwise, if it's an empty file, say it's there, delete the file. And again, if it's not, then we delete the list file, put a temporary file into the list file. Uh, it's also worth noting here, return false. So if there's nothing to go through, we, we don't change the files at all, we leave it as it is. Please like and subscribe to be notified of more videos like this. If there's a topic you like covered, please do let me know in the comments or also on Discord. Check my Twitch stream to see the bot in action and for other examples. So the links to my Twitch, social media and to stream a bot can be found at vrflad.com. Additional links to others that provide streamer bot content can be found in the description too. Finally, thank you so much to Nate for making a great bot. Please do consider supporting his Patreon, which is linked from streamer.bot.